He's had quite a busy week, and for him to take the time to join us on the show, it's certainly an honor and a pleasure. The 45th President of the United States, ladies and gentlemen, Donald J. Trump joining us right now on the line. Mr. President, thank you so much for Brian. joining us. Brian, how are you? I am doing okay. How are you? you? sound a little sick. Are you doing okay there, Mr. President? No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, I'm just running myself ragged, trying to make America great again. But, you know, every time I turn around, I get hit with another phony baloney indictment. It's so sad. It's so sad. And I have all of these rhinos running against me who all said I was the greatest president of the history of presidents. I got Chris Christie, the Hindenburg waddling against me this guy the only thing he runs for is a is a steak on the grill it's it's sad it's really really sad you know i want everyone to know who's listening i'm at 75 percent in the polls somehow chris christie's at 60 oh wait a minute that's his body fat i'm sorry he's at nine he's at nine it's terrible with people with this you know seriously chris christie's a1c is wtf it's really <laughs> Unbelievable. This guy's got more chins than a Chinese phone book. It's, it's sad. He hasn't seen his little mini Christie sausage in 35 years. This guy thinks he's going to beat me. The man, the man's spleen is made out of pepperoni. I have to tell you. Mr. President, Mr. President, I have to ask you this, though, because my understanding is you're going to be weighed on a scale when you're indicted this week in Georgia. Does that concern you at all that people, everybody's going to well, know what your it, weight is? It does concern me because, you know, usually I weigh myself. Uh, I don't like to be naked. I shower in my suit. But I have to tell you, when I do weigh in, I like to get on the scale just when I have my tidy whities on. But speaking of scales, you know, Chris Christie has the only scale that says to be continued on the next scale. They don't need that for me, but he needs it because he's so, you know, the guy is just unbelievable. But I don't want to weigh in in front of people because, you know, that they're going to have, a, you know, an officer who doesn't like me put their thumb or their foot on the scale, and they're going to make me look a lot heavier than I am. Because, as you know, I'm the healthiest president in the history of presidents. Dr. Ronnie Jackson, Dr. Ronnie Jackson said, I could live to be 200 years old. Do you remember when he said that? I don't, not, I don't remember. I don't, I, don't, I don't remember if he said you you're, you're, you're going to be believe 200 me, years believe old. Believe me, he said that. He okay. said that. I don't he recall that. Probably in president. fantastic shape. And wow. I'm a tremendous, <laughs> tremendous lover. Ask Melania if you ever see her, because I have. You know. <laughs> That's true. Nobody's seen her, Mr. President. Uh, how Nobody's much you, seen her. No. Where, where's Melania Trump, by the way, now that you bring that up? Where's I don't she? know. The problem is the, the ankle bracelet she somehow got it off. I guess she used her file or something and took it off. It's sad. It's sad. That is sad. And she, <laughs> yes. and she loves sad. hide and go seek. She loves hide and go seek. We're in a three week marathon game at Mar a Lago. The problem is at Mar a Lago, we have a lot of doors that lead to the outside. So that's, <laughs> we're stealing a lot of Mr. President, I have to ask you this question, sir. Why are you not going to be on the stage for the Republican presidential debate tomorrow night? Why did you decide not to do that? Brian, that's the stupidest question you've ever asked me. And here's why. I have already won the presidency. Why would I go up against Ron DeSatan? Run, run dishonest. Run, run to terrible. Listen, why would I go up against... He's polling at, what, nine? Christie's at, like, eight? Yes. Why would I go on stage and waste my time with a bunch of losers? I've already won. So I'm going to go on Tucker Carlson, the man I can't stand, but he gets great ratings. And we're going to do what's called counter programming. Counter programming. Have you ever heard of that? I, I made that term up. No I one like was it. saying counter programming <laughs> until I started saying I, I, I like it. programming. I, li I like it, Mr. Mr. President. I do. And I'll no one's going to watch. No one's going to watch because that, these people, you know, DeSantis has got a, DeSantis has a personality of a doorstop. Let me tell you something. I, 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 I've, I've been on, I've, I've, I've met so many boring people in my life, but he's the most boring. And by the way, by the way, it was over for him. He came to me, he's begging me, begging me, he crawled into his office, face down with his hands like he was climbing up a mountain. Was, sir, 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 President Trump, sir, could you endorse me, sir? I'm like, Ron. You're negative. You're negative fifty. You're negative fifty. And it's a sir. If you endorse me, I'll win the governorship, sir. I was like, you know, Ron. I don't know, but against my better judgment, I said, all right, I endorse you. And within fifteen minutes, he was governor. It was yeah. probably the fastest race in history. Yeah. He was sworn in, and the first thing he did, he Ron to Benedict Arnold, turned his back on me. That's why I call him Ron to Satan. 
He's Satan. He's Satan. <laughs> but, it's but true. I didn't know he crawled into your office. That's news. I, I didn't know he did Crawled that. into my oh. office. And I said, yeah, I even said, you know, I called him Ron DeBalas because that's what he is. He's got, <laughs> he doesn't have any. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I have w- so many names for him. I like the workshop a couple more. How's, how's sure. Ron? Yeah. Ron the one wife. Ron the one wife. How about that one? <laughs> that's a good one, Mr. President. I like Ron Diozepic. Ron Dio's up because the guy's got to lose some weight. He's a little, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's a little, he's a little bulky. He's got to stop working out. You know what? He eats a lot too. Maybe he's they Ron do. D. Donuts. They Ron all, D. Donuts. Ron D. Donuts. I kind of, that's actually Ron my favorite. Donuts. That's my favorite one, Mr. President. But what do you make about a guy like Aramaswamy uh, who said that he would pardon you if he becomes president of the United States? Do you like him? Well, I have to tell you, you know, I think you, you and I are very close. We talk almost every day. And as you know, I love the Indian people, great people, fantastic people, hardworking people. And I was over in India. Uh, to when I was president, and I'm still technically the president, but I was over there, and they, I was in a cricket, a cricket stadium, and I don't know why, I guess they worship crickets and cows over there, who knows, but we were there in the cricket stadium, 100,000 people, mainly guys, it was a sausage fest, and it smelled like curry and B.O., I have to tell you, but they love me, and Ramaswamy, Ramaswamy, Tyvek Ramaswamy, he made a lot of money selling Tyvek. And, but he's only 15, so I don't think he's Just, old enough to be president. Do you think, that, president. Mr. President, do you think that uh, you should uh, be under the age of 80 to be president? Do you think there should be an age limit? Because a lot of people think Joe Biden's I, too old. I, I have to tell you something. I do think there should be an age limit, but it shouldn't apply to me. shouldn't apply to you. Because you have to admit, I'm probably the feistiest. 77 year old you've ever met. I mean, look at Biden. He's walking around there. Oh, where am I? Hey, man. How's it going? Got sarsaparilla. Uh, malarkey. Uh, popcorn. Hey, come on, man. That guy's walking in circles. I don't know if you know this. He is so old, they discontinued his blood type. They, they're not wow. making any more of his blood. It's true. Wow. They have plenty of my blood. They have plenty wow. of my blood because my. My uncle, John Trump, and you can look this up, I'm not making this up, taught at um, MIT for 40 years. He was a super genius. I'm a stable genius. He's a super genius. He taught at MIT for 40 years, and they have my blood and his blood. My blood is his blood, and his blood is my blood, and this land is your land. (laughs) It was made for you and me, mainly me, because I'm so rich. Mr. President, I have to ask you this, though. Like, if you're so rich, then why aren't Mm -hmm. you paying for all the other co-conspirators in this latest Georgia indictment? Because I've heard Jenna Ellis and these some of these people that are indicted. Mm -hmm. You're not helping them out. Giuliani, I heard, is hurting for money. And why are you asking for donations? If you have all the money that you have and you're so wealthy like you claim you are, then why are you begging for money? And why aren't you helping out some of these co-conspirators? Well, first of all, I'm rich, so I don't like to spend my money. I like to spend other people's money, and the only way I can get other people's money is if they send it to me. They have to send it to me, then I spend it the way I I see fit. You know what I'm saying? Because who wants to take their own money to pay for something when people are willing willing to send me money? And that's kind of the art of the deal right there, which, by the way, is my favorite book. You know, my second favorite, The Bible. The Bible, but I'm not in it. I'm not in the Bible, but no. they say I'm going to be in the new version coming out very, very soon. As far as Jenna Ellis, she's okay. And uh, Rudy, who's, uh, you know, Rudy's losing it, I have to tell you. But why would I pay their bills? Why would I pay their bills? I never told them to do that stuff. They're doing, doing that on their own. You know what I mean? They can ask for money. Rudy's doing cameos. I heard he made over $1,200 last year. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. <laughs> that is a lot of money. If you're just joining us, he's the 45th president of the United States, Donald Trump. And 47th, and I'm technically the president right now. So I'm just, I've always have been, always will be the president, you know. And when I get in, I think you've seen the rallies. It's going to be president for life. I'm not leaving. <laughs> You're never going to leave. Back in. Well, I president have to, for life. I have to president ask you this. President for life. Well, I have to ask you this, Mr. President. Are you afraid? Are you scared at all that with these four indictments, there is the possibility that you could go to jail? Has that entered your mind at all? And does that scare you, Mr. President? If I go to jail, I will unite all of the different gangs in the jail, and I will be the POTUS prison president and everyone will love it because you know we've got a large you know you probably remember I did a big big prison reform bill 
because of uh, Kim Kardashian. Boy, what a what a body she has. Let me tell you yeah, we don't disagree. But I did a big I did a big prison reform bill, and a lot of people don't know this, but in that bill is a set aside for a tiny mansion on the prison grounds if some ex president or president end up going to jail on trumped up charges so they could live a normal life. But you know, you probably remember the good fellas. They they sure. had a little section of their own. They got you know, they were cutting the garlic with the razor blade and they had the sausage and the pasta. Yep. That's how I see myself. I'll be the kingpin. I'll be the kingpin in the prison. And by the way, these federal prisons, they're just like it's just like a resort. It's almost like Trump and Mar a Lago. So maybe we'll just set up Trump Mar-a-Lago as the prison that I don't have to leave, which I don't like to leave anyway. <laughs> Mr. President, uh, you've been asked to not make any sort of threats towards the DOJ or judges or taint the jurors mm-hmm. or, or y- right, you've been right, asked right, not to do right. that time and time again. Mm-hmm. Why do you keep mm-hmm. doing it? Why do you keep doing it? Well, because, you know, listen, I don't think Mike Pence is getting the message. And by the way, all I said to Mike Pence was, I said, Mike, accidents happen. Okay. Toasters fall into bathtubs. Dogs suddenly turn on their owners. Scaffolding collapses. Planes go down. That's all I said. Is that a threat? Does that sound like a threat to you? That doesn't sound like a threat to me. What is- it's more like a... It's just something you say to people that you love and you care. Not what, him. what would you say to Mike Pence right now? Like if you were in a room alone with him, Mr. President, like, cause I know you're not very happy with him these days. And a lot of people are not happy with him to your defense. What would you say to Mike Pence right now? What do you think about him? Stop being such a tough guy. He thinks he's so tough. Oh, I didn't, I only was following the instruction of my attorney. Don't listen to your attorneys. They didn't get you to the White House. I got you to the White House. Don't listen to these guys and all their legalese. You know what I'm talking about? All that stuff they say in court, uh, all those terminologies. I'm probably the greatest attorney in the history of attorneys, and I'm not even an attorney. I mean, look, if Rudy could be an attorney, Anybody can be an attorney, if you know what I'm saying. You don't hear an argument from me. I guess this would be my last question, uh, Mr. President. Mm-hmm. What would be your message to the people of Las Vegas? Of course, you've got the Trump Tower here. And uh, I know you never were able to get the gaming license here, which I find interesting. But what would be your message to the good people in Las Vegas and the state of Nevada? As uh, you do have some supporters here, many supporters here, even though you've been indicted for a fourth time now. What would be your message to them? My message is, in a city that people love numbers, like you just said, four indictments, 91 criminal counts, no one else running has these numbers. I have I put more numbers on the board than anybody, but I just want everyone to know how much I love, love, love Las Vegas. It doesn't matter where you're from in the world or the country, Las Vegas is the complete opposite. And that's why I love coming to my second home, Trump Tower in Las Vegas, because Las Vegas is the only place where you can get a woman delivered to your room faster than a pizza, which I think is incredible. I've seen the trucks on the strip. I just think that's miraculous, really. (laughs) I have too. Mr. President, thank you so much for your time. I know that you're good friends with a uh, very close friend of mine.